This video has been sponsored by DDC LTD. Hello, I have already made two videos about the Lexus LS600H, what you can face when the battery runs down, how to solve it, what to look for. I have a top dot job starter, which is also a battery tester, and in the last video I also looked at the TPMS sensors with Zoltan. Hi Zoltan. Hello, hi. Hello everyone. We tested it with Zoltan Fekete from Fekete Diagnostics and showed that the DDC LTD, if you buy a tap free device, you will receive a TPMS or TS gun. TS gun. What kind of programming, cloning, and other things can you do with a device called TS gun? However, since DDC LTD already offers a battery tester from lunch, let's take a look at the difference between a basic simple Tomdon tester intended for ordinary users and such a professional tester. Please Zoli, tell me how this thing is different, what it can do more and why is it good for, for service stations to get it? Well, the first step in troubleshooting at service stations is to test the battery, to check it. Because if our battery is bad, there may be a voltage drop when starting which will cause a lot of communication errors with the car. So the first step is always to test the battery. There are different tools for this. If you have a tablet, it is advisable to buy the corresponding battery tester. This is a very simple little device. We can check the status of the battery with an application, obviously according to its type, and perform a start test and a charge test. We can attach this to the diagnostic report, so we can give the customer a complex package that shows the status of the battery. And as you mentioned, such a tester is not only important when you need to test the battery itself or when starting the car, but also if you have any electric problems, you immediately start by checking the battery to see what data it provides. Since many electronic problems can be caused by the battery itself being no longer good or getting old. That's right. The first step in diagnostics is battery testing. What types of batteries are there? What is the difference between AGM and other types of batteries? Please tell me a little well, more about this. I'll try to briefly summarize the batteries in a nutshell. There are three types. Acid. EFB and AGM batteries. Acid batteries are the old, traditional ones, so the electrolyte is floating in the battery. EFB is still the same technology, just a little stronger. The water breakdown limit is between 14.4 and 14.6 volts. This should be avoided because this process occurs in the battery in the same way. EFB is so much stronger than AGM that it can withstand up to 14.7 volts. These were installed in earlier start-stop systems and in cars that already required intelligent charging, but not so aggressive charging. The next one is the AGM battery. It's structurally completely different. The acid doesn't leak. It's soaked in a fiberglass fabric. They can withstand high voltage. The charging system of AGM cars is a bit aggressive. These charge at 15 volts. There is a so-called recuperation in cars, where we recover energy. The goal of current car technology is to emit as few harmful substances as possible. So all the energy that can be used must be used, and unnecessary energy must not be produced. The AGM charging system is designed to charge the battery up to 85%, leaving the remaining area for this recuperation. Physics is simple, right? If we take energy from somewhere, we also have to put it in from somewhere. So, when our generator charges, the engine loads it, and the more it charges, the more it loads the engine. With engine braking, we have unnecessary energy because the goal is to reduce the speed as quickly as possible. The engineers figured out how to use this excess energy to charge the battery. In this case, they start to excite the engine brake. They start to excite the battery or the generator. The generator starts to charge the battery, and it charges the battery with a fairly extreme voltage of 15 volts for a short time, but with 15 volts. We can gain quite a lot of energy with this, 
Our harmful substances are reduced, but the battery has to somehow tolerate this. EFB and acid cannot tolerate this. EFB would still be tolerable, but it will certainly make acid batteries practically unchargeable in a year or two, and your health will start to deteriorate. The replacement is done in such a way that instead of acid, you can put EFB, AGM. Instead of EFB, you can put AGM. We never change the other way around. So the factory specification is that the battery needs to be EFB. If an EFB battery is needed in a car, then we can put AGM in it or the appropriate EFB. There are car types that can be reprogrammed from EFB to AGM, from AGM to EFB, right? This means that the charging system starts charging with a completely different character, but it has to be programmed. With start-stop batteries, you need to know that after replacing the battery, it has to be programmed so that the charging system knows that a new battery has been installed. Isn't this necessary? To put it very simply, the volume of a new battery is, say, 10 liters. As the battery degrades, it becomes 8 liters. Here the battery is ready for replacement. Let's say we put a new one in. The charging system doesn't know this because it doesn't detect it. It still wants to load this 8 liters of content into the new battery at all costs. So an upper, quite significant percentage is lost there. That's why it has to be programmed. What kind of battery did we put in? What capacity path? The manufacturer is also important because the same AGM battery manufactured by different manufacturers needs completely different characteristics and a serial number needs to be entered, programmed, and then the system works well from then on. That's it in a nutshell. We performed the battery check on the Lexus, right? After a replacement, we always check the new battery. Because there are overcharged batteries, these always need to be checked. Right, based on the measurement, we determined that the battery was 100% charged at the time of the measurement, and its health status was 99%. There is such a value, a value called SOH, which shows it in percentage terms. 100% is the best. And then we move downwards, right? After such 80%, it is advisable to think about replacing the battery. The battery was in perfect condition. We performed a startup test, and the internal starting voltage was above 12 volts during the startup test. At 9 volts, it's certain that there's a fault, either the battery's fault, or the starter motor's fault, or there's a transient resistance somewhere. So the voltage can drop that much then. And we also performed a charge test. That's how the battery is tested globally, and that concludes it. During the charge test, the system showed 14.4 volts at 2,500 revolutions per minute, which is absolutely perfect. The battery is good. The system is good. So you can drive it safely. Zoli, thank you again for your time, for giving me and the dear viewers so much useful information about battery types and varieties, and about this lunch accessory itself, with which you can really learn everything on a professional level, not just for a workshop, but if someone is interested, they can easily get this for themselves at home. And with such a tap-free device, they can really solve almost everything with it. Of course, this requires a qualification, which I think you also have training yes, for right. at DDCITD. Thank you again again for your time a lot of useful information i hope you enjoy it too if you like this video press the like button if you have any question for zoli write it to the comment section have a nice day bye goodbye everyone the location for this video was provided by cadvent car service